handling of strengthen and weaken questions is identical. We look for an option that will strengthen or weaken the conclusion. So we look at these question types together. So let's start our discussion with strength and weaken questions. Now, don't think of the argument as words written on the screen. Put some people behind it. So what I mean is that imagine a debate is going on. Uh, of course, there are two sides to a debate. So say um, Adam represents one side and starts speaking. Now he says what the argument has given. And the conclusion of the argument is his position on the debate. It's the side that he is taking. If you need to strengthen the argument, imagine that you are on Adam's side. It's your turn to speak now and add information to support Adam. Now this information that you are seeking, you are going to pick from the given five options. It cannot be a repetition of what he has already said. It must be some new information to support his opinion. And that is why it is necessary to separate out the conclusion and strengthen that. You cannot strengthen the premises, the premises he has already said, and we have to take them to be true. So we separate out the conclusion and that is what we strengthen to oppose, uh, to support his opinion. Okay, now what if you need to weaken the argument? Now you are not in Adam's team. You are in the opposite team. So Adam just presented some data, which we need to take to be true to support his position. What will you do? You will provide some new data, some new information, again, which we, you will pick from uh, the five options. Now this new data should oppose his opinion, his conclusion, because you are taking the opposite view in the debate. Look, since his data must be taken to be true, you cannot say that his data is false. What you need to do is give new data to show that his conclusion may be false. And that is why we say that it is necessary to separate out the conclusion and weaken that. So now this is how we analyze strengthen and weaken questions. We identify the conclusion of the argument, first of all. Then we find the option that increases the probability of the conclusion being true in case we are talking about strength in questions and false in case we are talking about weakened questions. Think of it as a debate. It will help you get perspective. Now, there are a few points that you need to note for both strengthen and weaken questions, and the points are the same for both of them. As we said, the two question types are very, very similar. Now, the correct option will strengthen or weaken the conclusion. It will make it more or less likely to happen. Bear in mind that we do not need to establish the conclusion or prove that it is wrong. We don't need to establish or prove wrong. No, that's not our job. What we need to do is only make it more or less likely to happen. So our new data should only make it more or less likely. I mean, of course, in case we are able to establish it, then certainly it strengthens a whole lot. That's fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. But an option which just makes it more likely to happen is also correct. Okay, now the correct option will bring in new information. As we discussed, we cannot repeat what Adam said in case we are trying to strengthen the conclusion. And we cannot um, um, say that whatever data he presented is incorrect. So that is why we will always bring in new information. Okay, if the question stem looks complicated, Analyze it properly before moving to the options. Now, this is also extremely important. Um, for example, sometimes we get some really complicated question stems. For example, let's say, um, which of the following supports the, um, the claim of the researchers? The claim of the researchers regarding the impact of this event right so now what do you have to support you have to support the claim of the researchers regarding the impact 
of a certain event that is given. So what do you have to do? First, you will identify the event they are talking about. Then you will identify what is the impact of this particular event. Then you will identify what is the claim of the researchers regarding the impact of this particular event. And this is what you will need to support or strengthen, right? So, you know, in case we don't analyze the question stem properly, we could end up supporting, let's say, our own opinion. We could end up giving our own opinion of the impact of the event. That is not all right, right? So make sure that you analyze the option, uh, the question stem properly first. Okay, now next, improving the validity of a survey does help strengthen our argument in favor of the result of the survey and reverse for weaken. Now, why did we have to put this over here? Usually, we say that we cannot touch the premises, right? They're taken to be true. But in case we, um, the argument gives us a survey, and in case we prove that these, let's say they were sampling bias in the, uh, in the survey, during the survey, or then the result of the survey does become questionable. That is, in case we can question the validity of the survey, or if we can establish the validity of the survey, then we can weaken or strengthen the result of the survey. We can provide argument in favor of the result or against the result of the survey. So in survey questions, it does help to uh, question the validity of the survey itself, yeah? even though our uh, conclusion will be the result of the survey, right? Okay. Now, in case of a conditional conclusion, if A then B, do not worry about whether A can happen or not. Again, extremely important. Sometimes the um, conclusion will be in the form of a condition. For example, let's say if bees become extinct, um, let's say if bees go extinct, then we will not get fruit. We will not get fruit. Now the question is, do we have to worry about whether bees will become extinct or not? And one of the, or at least one of the options is uh, going to give you some data regarding this, whether the bees will become extinct or not. That is not our uh, worry at all. We don't have to think about whether this if condition will happen or not. Our only worry is that if this condition does happen, then whether the then condition will happen or not, whether B will happen or not, we only have to focus on that. We do not have to focus on whether A can happen or not. Again, we'll look at some examples, that's fine. Now, some questions, instead of giving a conclusion, will give a plan. So we have a video in which we'll discuss the plan question. So we'll take this a lot more in detail at that time. Just understand that um, we have a plan instead of a conclusion sometimes. And what we have to do is either improve the possibility of the success of the plan, which we say that we are strengthening the argument or we have to show that um, in the plan is likely to fail, where we have we say that we are weakening the argument. So it's pretty simple to our regular arguments, which have those premises and conclusions. But in any case, as I said, we will look at this a little later. Now, sometimes you may come across strengthen except questions. These questions, though, they are very much like strengthen except or weaken except for that matter. They are very much like the strengthen or the weaken questions, except that Normally, in our strength and our weakened questions, uh, there will be two, three options which are going to be out of scope, which we'll just read and we'll just eliminate them that they have no relevance. But here, at least four of the options will be relevant to the argument and that makes them a little more time consuming, not difficult, but time consuming. So you have to look for four options that are going to strengthen the argument and one may weaken the argument or it may have no impact. That is, it may be out of scope, it may have no impact or it may weaken. Anything will work, but it should not strengthen. That's all. And same thing for weaken except questions that four options will weaken, but one option will have either no impact or it will strengthen or it will be out of scope. Okay, now stay away from emotional, ethical or moral judgment calls and focus on only what the argument talks about. So say we have an argument where we are discussing the financial viability of building a dam uh, on a river. 
Now, uh, if one of the options talks about how the villages next to that river, the people in the villages next to that river will get impacted, then um, is that out of scope or is it something relevant? In case we are discussing only the financial viability of that plan, then the aspect of what happens to the villages next to the river is out of scope. It is irrelevant. So do not get emotionally entangled in the argument. Even though whether we should build the dam or not, that uh, decision should take into account, uh, you know, whether there are villagers and how they'll be impacted. But if we are only talking about the financial li viability, then that is what we need to focus on, not on any other aspect of the plan. Those will be separate discussions. Think about that, right? Those will be separate arguments and we'll have those separate discussions. If our conclusion is that it is viable, financially viable to build the dam, then we only focus on the finances, not on the other aspects. Okay, now read critically, which means focus on every detail given in the argument. Of course, it goes without saying, but we're still saying it, that you must ensure that you do think about every detail that is given in the argument. Do not gloss over anything. So the first step in strength and weaken questions is to identify the conclusion. Now, the conclusion is the purpose of the author. It is the reason he wrote the argument, the opinion that he wants to convey.